Hello and welcome to another edition of Eye on Port, the program that brings Ghana's shipping and maritime industry closer to you. This program is proudly brought to you by the Ghana Revenue Authority, Goyo Company Limited, Serene Insurance, Ghana Link and Meridian Port Services. It is powered by the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority and our media partner is the Business and Financial Times. Viewers, last week, the Center for Maritime Law and Security, that is SEM Laws Africa, launched a project that is seeking to promote local capacity to address the destabilizing impact of foreign fishing vessels in the Gulf of Guinea. They are doing this in collaboration with the Center for Coastal Management of the University of Cape Coast and with funding from the United States. We had the opportunity to get in touch with a senior research officer at SEM Laws Africa to give us the scope of this particular project. With her was an executive member from the Ghana Industrial Trawlers Association to give us the perspective of industry. Here are highlights from that particular discussion. So let me come to you, uh, Doc. I want to start with you and just find out from you what the, uh, this particular project is about, promoting local capacity to address uh, the, stabilizing, the de destabilizing impact of foreign fishing vessels in the Gulf of Guinea. This was a project that you launched with some of your partners. Can you tell us about it? Okay. Thank you very much, Kennedy. So this uh, project is a three-year project mm. funded by the U.S. Department of State through the U.S. Embassy in Accra. It runs from October 1, 2022. Mm to September 2024. Now, the project was awarded to SEM Laws Africa in the Center for, Mar uh, the Center for Coastal Management, University of Cape Coast, Cape Coast yeah, sure. and as partners to ensure that the objectives of the project are realized. Mm. Now, the first objective of the project, which is to increase uh, transparency to mm. ensure that public is informed to help uh, improve the political will to control the impact of distant water fishing vessels mm -hmm. in the Gulf of Guinea. Mm -hmm. Then the second objective, which is to improve monitoring, surveillance and control, and also enforcement capabilities, both on the local and regional scales, mm -hmm. to ensure that information that is needed is shared and on time, mm -hmm. reliable information for that matter. Mm -hmm. And then the third objective is focus on the industry, taking over the industry on a local and regional scale. Mm -hmm. With this latest project that you launched uh, last week, uh, you know, w before you get neck deep into it, mm -hmm. uh, can you bring us up to speed with all the preliminary findings that you have, uh, you know, come up with? Interestingly enough, the DWFV project mm -hmm. that you, you just spoke about is, um, is looking to build on the experiences that we've gathered over the years. Mm. It's not looking to reinvent the wheel. So uh, one of the work packages of this project is to have strategic engagement right. to ensure greater impact. Mm. Now, we talk about strategic engagement looking at local, national, and regional scales. Right. We have groups that have already started some work mm. in various fields when it comes to the objectives of the projects, whether it's to improve the industry, whether it's to improve governance, whether it's to improve information sharing. Mm. So we seek to leverage on these efforts and success that has, been, has already been built over the years with these groups, and then to ensure that we are building on them and to avoid duplication. You gave us one of the uh, findings, uh, preliminary do. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to find out from you whether these findings are common in all the seven regions that you are carrying out this study, or uh, each country has a peculiar situation. Well, there are, there are some common issues that run through. Mm, through. Of course, it's a shared resource, yes. so you can understand why there are common issues that run through. Mm. Um, however, there are unique uh, issues as well. Um, for instance, if you pick um, that first objective, that is to improve pu uh, public transparency mm. of information mm. um, to help Ghana the political will that is needed to mm. control the activities of these distant water fishing vessels. Public here is media, mm. CSOs, yeah. and the community. Mm. Okay. So it's targeted at the media, reportage, right. and coverage, and it's targeted at CSOs, awareness creation, mm. community awareness creation. Right. So 
the issues are different in the focal countries. Mm. When, it, when it comes to media, take for instance media, and I'll, I'm just dwelling on media because of experience yes. gained from the VOI uh, project. Mm. The voice of the media is different in each of these countries. Okay. The strength and therefore the ability to help change a situation when it mm. comes to the fishery sector. Mm. Um, there's so much to be learned also from other countries. Mm. Mauritania, for instance, has already joined the Fisheries Transparency Initiative mm. because of their willingness to make public information. Mm. Information that from the FITI standards ensures that this is made public and therefore can inform decision making. Mm. So first and foremost, Mauritania therefore would stand out as a good example to help us improve making information available, available. helping research, to channel research in the right places. Mm. So there are peculiar situations with each of the countries, and that is why they have been selected the way they have been right. to represent um, the Gulf of Guinea. Mm. And therefore, lessons that have been learned will be adopted in the other countries. Let me come to you, uh, Mr. Sam. You were also at the event on that particular day. I just want to find out from you what your assessment of the event is. How did it go, out, go for you? Well, I would say it was very successful. Mm. And I would say that when you look at the project objectives and the activities that were outlined, mm. and because it borders on industrial fishing, mm. and we are fishers, right. we were very much interested in that. Okay. And not just that, the fact that the project is being led by Guinean organization mm. also gave us a lot of confidence. Right. Because when you look at the literature, and most of the stories around industrial fishing, particularly around, uh, along West Africa, and Ghana in particular, mm. you realize that the authors are not Guyanese. Yeah. And sometimes, um, as Ghana Industrial Trawlers Association, we, we have the feeling that we are targeted, we are marginalized. Mm. And because we, we, we work with other foreign partners, so we, we have that impression. Mm. And sometimes this publication do not go down well for our businesses. Mm. In fact, such publications are reducing investor confidence in the industry. Mm. So we thought that if we are having our own, who are leading this process, then of course we will have a fair, a fair report. We have a report that will be confident that the, the authors mm. really want to address whatever problem that exists. As your organization, that's the Ghana Industrial Trawlers Association, actually admit that we have the stabilizing impacts uh, you know, in the Gulf of Guinea following activities of foreign fishing vessels. Before I answer that question, um, we, I need to make a distinction here. Mm. We are local industrial or semi-industrial mm. vessels. Mm. We are not foreign fishing vessels. Right. However, we all operate in the same EEZ. Mm. That is the exclusive economic zone. zone yeah. And globally, it has been accepted mm. that when it comes to fishing, and it come to trawl fishing, and particularly bottom trawl fishing, mm. it is destructive. It is destructive. It is something that is not debatable. Mm. However, the way you go around doing it, because you are virtually trawling at the bottom of the sea. Right. You are talking about the seabed. So definitely you are sweeping the seabed. Yeah. So bottom trawling globally, is becoming something that is raising a lot of questions. Mm. However, if you are fishing and the, you are not being properly monitored and controlled, mm. of course, fishers will often use unapproved gears. They may do certain things that may not other world, that may cause some impact 
mm. and we can call it, I don't know whether to use destabilizing or, or, or not, but definitely they may have negative impact when it comes to using wrong gears. Mm. But on board our vessels, we have monitoring system, we have observers on board, we have um, we have AIS, VMS, they are all monitoring tools. However, you cannot trust the fishes. You mm. cannot trust fishes. There are certain things that we do and we normally it's called IUU, mm. illegal, unreported, unregulated and fishing, unregulated yeah. fishing. Yes. So I wouldn't say the industry is perfect. Mm. That is why we welcome such a study. Mm. That is why we, we, we want to support this project so that at least if we cannot eradicate, mm. we minimize IU fishing to the barest minimum. Mm. Because for us as fishes, our main livelihood depends on the fish. Right. So if we don't um, fish in a responsible manner, there will not be fish mm. and there will not be business. Mm. I recall that recently the Fisheries Commission, the ministry, have introduced a number of measures all aimed at ensuring that the fishes are managed in a sustainable manner. Right. We have a gear directive, we have observers on board. Mm. Quite recently, they are trying to even introduce cameras mm. to monitor all the, all the happenings right. on board the vessel mm. with the aim of reducing some of the negative things that happen at sea. Mm. So there is a lot of effort, and I want to commend the ministry, yeah. I want to commend the Fisheries Commission for all this initiative, and also commend industry, mm. particularly the Ghana Industrial Trawlers Association, yeah. for embracing this change. Mm. Because change is a process, yeah. and people must embrace it before the change will happen. Mm. Because if you impose it, then they, you will not be successful. Mm. So the trawlers or the fishes have embraced the change, yeah. including observing the close season. Mm. And we have observed close season since 2016 to date. Right. So you can see the willingness, the cooperation, the collaboration between the managers and regulators and then industry. Mm. For this, in our case, the industrial trawlers, right. all geared towards helping in the sustainable management of the resource. Mm. We want to continue working. Mm. We don't want to be out of business. Yeah. And we can only work when we have fish mm. in the sea. Mm. That is why for a long time, we have also been advocating, even though we have had assurances from the minister mm. that a reserve vessel will be procured. Research vessel. Yes, yes. research vessel. That's been a long-standing issue, a long-standing yes. one, yeah. Research vessel will be procured mm. to help us to know mm. whether the efforts, I mean, the vessels are many mm. as compared to the resources, right. so that we can properly align efforts with the resource. Mm. So it is something that is ongoing. In the past, it was not there, the change was not there. Mm. People were doing whatever they want, but now I can assure you. There's a lot of change, and, and I think it's good for the industry. All right, folks, we hope that particular interaction was able to give you some insight on what this project is hoping to achieve. Now, let us take a few comments on the subject we have just discussed. After we go on break, we'll be back with more news. This comes from Barnabas Autry Kielsen from Facebook. He says, the panelists came very prepared. Good work. My name is Ben from Tema. Can Mr. Sam help differentiate between foreign fishing vessels and the type members of his outfit operates? They are, they are Ghana flag mm. and they are operated by Ghanaian companies. Yes. And all their catches are counted, are, are counted to the state. Yes. So the resources belong to Ghana. That is the difference. Mm. With the foreign fishing vessel, they take the resource and then they take it and count it to their countries. Yes. My name is Penny. It's Mr. Sam saying that regulators should relax on enforcement just so fishers can remain employed. Uh, I, I don't think I will support 
anything that the regulators should relax. Mm. I think they should do their work. Right. Uh, fishers have to fish responsibly. Mm. Every now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goyle Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goyle Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Goyle Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Goyle Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goyle has that sorted. Goyle, good energy. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell God, my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is. You still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water. Or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policy that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the floods have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Suddenly my goods are on the IC covered with their marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima, tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading block globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. Welcome back from the break. Now let us move on to pick a few shipping and maritime related news from Ghana. The Transport Sector Working Group has recently met at the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority's headquarters to be brought up to speed with developments in the sector. The working group, which is under the instruction of the Ministry of Finance, is made up of members from the Ministry of Transport, Ministry of Roads and Highways, and the Ministry of Railway Development. They were briefed by the director of the Port of Keta project, Dr. Alexander Yaweduse, who emphasized that management of GPHA is working assiduously to ensure that careful strategic processes are followed to ensure the successful completion of the port project. So we will plan, we will plan again, we will plan better, and ensure that once you start doing bricks and mortar, you are on solid ground. We are doing EIA. Without the EIA, feasibility means nothing. So the EIA will pray, central tender will approve quickly for us, 
and then we can complete it within five to six, six months, hopefully. The two documents allow an investor to be serious. In the meantime, the ministry has directed us to engage interested parties who would like to invest in The Transport Sector Working Group was also updated on activities being undertaken by the Ministry of Roads and Highways to ensure effective axle load control and monitoring on the country's road corridors. We do periodic reshuffling of staff. We have started a piloting of uh, installation of cameras that we monitor from a station. Then uh, we try to have a standardized weighing software, periodic calibration of weighing equipment, and as you see, organized education and sensitization program for the staff and stakeholders. The director in charge of policy planning, monitoring and evaluation at the Ministry of Transport, Irene Mesiba, who chaired the meeting, gave her remarks. So one thing that we also linked, which is very critical to the project, is the project has been grouped in clusters. So not everything will be done by one investor. So once an investor comes, you look at the packages and then you can select a package of your choice and then you put your resources within that package. It has been a yearly tradition of the Ghana Port and Harbour Authority staff and management of the Port of Takrade to give back to selected and the privileged members of the Sekindi Takrade Metropolis to enhance their livelihoods. This year, one of such beneficiaries of the corporate social responsibility of the port is the Twin City Special School for persons with intellectual and developmental disabilities. The port donated for stuff, water, stationary items, and toiletries that are expected to come in handy in the new academic year. It's just the usual thing that we always come at the end of the year to support uh, the school. So this is the message we are also bringing from the port of Takrady. We say very big thank you to you. We really appreciate whatever you are doing for us. We know you are our friends, whether we ask or not. This, we don't ask, but you always come. In a related development, the Port Medical Workers Association of the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority Hospital has extended help to the secondary school of the deaf to support the needs of these children. We are grateful to the whole department of Gapoha. And they could have, you could have sent it to a different place, but you chose Sekdev to come and donate to us. We are so much grateful to the hospital for giving us this donation. Uh, it will be used for the purpose of which you have donated to the school. GPHA Hospital offers specialist services like obstetrician, gynecology consult. We also have um, general surgery um, specialist with us. We also have scan services, ultrasound, abdominal ultrasound, gynecological ultrasound, obstetric ultrasound. And very soon we'll be introducing the service of the CT scan and um, other services. We have eye services now and, and so we want to encourage the public to utilize the services that we have. We are very soon going to run a 24-hour service for pharmacy and uh, we'll very soon also add on other services that uh, will come on board and of course we'll let you know as and when. Now let us turn our attention to the global stage and pick a few international shipping and maritime related news. The Port of Rotterdam has seen a number of investments in energy transition projects in 2022 worth a total of approximately 3 billion euros. Some of these projects include investment in a major biorefinery and Europe's largest green hydrogen plant. In July 2022, subsidiaries of Shell took the final investment decision to build Holland Hydrogen One, which will be Europe's largest renewable hydrogen plant. The 200 megawatt electrolyzer will be constructed on the Tweed Maxvlaat in the port of Rotterdam and will produce up to 60,000 kilograms of renewable hydrogen per day. The renewable power for the electrolyzer will come from the offshore wind farm Holland's Kust, which is partly owned by Shell. Holland Hydrogen One is expected to be operational in 2025. 
India's Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways has revealed its plans to increase the share of renewable energy to 60%. Under the Green Shipping Initiative, major ports have implemented and initiated various activities that would help in reducing greenhouse gas emissions from the ports and shipping sector. Activities included shore to ship power, the use and promotion of electrically powered port equipment, the use of alternative fuels like liquefied natural gas, compressed natural gas, storage and bunkering facilities for environmentally friendly fuels like liquefied natural gas, compressed natural gas, hydrogen, ammonia among others. The transition towards renewable sources of energy including solar power, wind power and tidal power have already been initiated at many of the major ports of the country. Now, the ministry is planning to increase the use of renewables to 60% of the total power demand of each of its major ports from a present share of less than 10%. All right, for today's Word of the Day segment, we will tell you what Conroe is. A Conroe vessel is a type of rural vessel which carry containers not only on trailers, but also on cellular guides on the weather deck, with these containers being loaded by gear over the rails and not by trucks using the vessel ramps. It's now time to take a look at the schedule of vessels that have birthed in the ports of Tema and Takrade and at the anchorages of both ports, as well as those expected in the coming weeks, plus the Bank of Ghana action rates, which you may need to know to clear your cargo with. All right, viewers, this brings us to the close of today's edition of Iron Port. We hope you've been informed and educated. Remember, all Iron Port content can be found on our YouTube channel, Iron Port. Please subscribe, like, and give us feedback. Thank you for watching.